is because Bottom Creek in Bent Mountain, Virginia would be crossed by the MVP. The MVP wants to cross this single tier three waterway. Um, the other thing we're going to be making tonight are these flags, which are a new design. They're folded into like an accordion fold and cut kind of like paper dolls. And this is great if you want to make a whole bunch of flags. If you want an actual, you know, thousands of flags, like we have some hanging over here, several hundred, I think, at this point. This is an easy way to make a whole bunch of flags all at once. And the other flags we're going to be making this evening are our battle flags, our community flags, our pennant flags. This is my original water flag from the summer of 2018 on a phoenix pole that is also a walking stick carved by Jamie Hale in Giles County. Our phoenix poles are made to indicate trees that were murdered, not to indicate, to actually uplift trees that were murdered by the MVP. This is a solidarity flag. Um, we sent out between 80 and 100 flags to grassroots organizations and community groups all over Virginia the summer of 2018. And this one was intended to support Ellen Gearhart at Camp White Pine and also demonstrated solidarity with Camp Wanga, Stand with Red Camp, and the Yellow Finch Blockade. This was actually made for a Still Here benefit that was put on by our very own Josh Banna in January of 2019. So the flag we're gonna be making tonight is gonna to be repurposed material. It's gonna look a little more like this. Um, and these are excellent to, to demonstrate like groups of water protectors and how we come together to converge. So the first flag that we're going to be making this evening is a water body flag. And this is intended to indicate a water body that is threatened by the Atlantic coast or the Mountain Valley pipeline. So here's a list if you want to choose a threatened water body or you may choose to make a flag that is intended to represent a water body near you that you love. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, is to look, this is one of the original water body flags from Bat Creek in Augusta County. And um, these water flags are really like love letters um, to the water. And this is one of my very favorite love letters to the water made by my friend Barry O'Keefe who taught a workshop here a couple of weeks ago actually. And it's for David Creek and then children of course come up with the best one so what we're going to do is take this strip of fabric and fold it in half and then cut from the outer edge to the folded edge and just a really simple triangle which makes the swallowtail design so really like this is all you need this is a water flag what I found about this project is that it is really led and inspired by the communities that it serves. So there was a little girl at Yellow Finch um, Blockade down in Elliston, Virginia, who cut hearts all over her flag, and that's what inspired this design. So you've probably all made Valentine's before, right? That's all we're going to do is we're going to cut half a heart in the top, like you're making a little Valentine, love letter to the water. And this can be hung like that um, so that you, you know, see the heart. It also acts as a way to attach it to a string, to a limb, to a car antenna, to your wrist, around your neck, take it on and off easily. And um, I've even seen guys wear them as ties, which is great. And so this is, that's like the very simplest way to make a water body flag. Today's water body flag is dedicated to Little Teal Creek. A little over two years ago was when the Little Teal Crossing was invaded by the NDP and they are still damaging that creek to this day. Um, so next up, we're going to make the well, like accordion style uh, paper doll type flag. So you get the whole strand. So this was already folded into an accordion shape. And take a good sharp pair of scissors, cut in about an inch, and then cut down about an inch, maybe two. 
And depending on your fabric, this is a repurposed sheet, but if you have thicker fabric, you may not be able to do this. I like to rip them whenever possible because that allows the strings to float away. And, you know, Tibetan prayer flags, the prayers float away on the strings. So you can just rip down the strand and then turn it around the other way and do the very same thing that we did for that water body flag, except with this whole pile of flags. So cut from the edge of the fabric towards the folded edge. And then when you open it up, you have an entire strand of, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine water body flags. And if you want them to be thinner, like those over there, you can always rip these up, you know, or cut them three times. But that's like an easy to make a whole bunch all at once. So repurposed material is my favorite to work with, in part because sometimes the material itself inspires the design. So in this case, I took a shirt, a long sleeve shirt, cut the arms off to make flags out of the arms and just cut flags into the bottom. So you can just wear the flags, which is wonderful. But what I discovered is that the sleeves, in this case, they're elasticized, but this can easily be done with like a button sleeve as well. You can put these on your wrists, which leaves your hands free to hold whatever you need to hold. And then they can be dancing hand flags which is absolutely a lovely way to engage in wire blastings, water dances, and you know, the, the cut is kind of dictated by the fabric. This is really light fabric. If you're say repurposing a pair of Tammy Bolinsky's grandfather's old overalls to make a water flag for Murray Johnson to take to Art Tanderlip in Nebraska, your design's gonna be a little different. It's very durable but it's also not as aerodynamic as some of the others. So next up, we're gonna make our own community flag, the large flags that we put on Phoenix poles to converge, whether it's at a tree set or at a state water control board meeting. So you wanna start with a strip of fabric, just like before, except, you know, bigger, about four foot by about a foot, you know, again, depending on the fabric, and same process, same design, same swallowtail. Take this, fold it in half, cut from the outer edge to the folded edge so that you have a swallowtail at the bottom or the edge of the flag. Now, the only difference with these big ones is that rather than the heart at the top, we want two holes on the edges, and you wanna leave enough room so that you're not pulling on the fabric too much. Fold it into a quarter, or however you wanna do it, and just take a tiny snip so you have a little hole at both edges. Now, at this point, you can use any number of tools. I like using a strip of fabric that's already cut into a flag so that when you attach this to a phoenix pole these flags are going to flutter as well and right here when you tie these two pieces together you want to tie the little corner of the fabric as well so that it adds additional strength you can also use nylon cord like this flag is attached to this phoenix pole which came from a cut in franklin county and the nylon cord is more durable, you know, it's gonna last longer. But the point here of having them easy to attach and detach is because there's some places that they might not want you to be able to easily wave your flag high in the air above the crowd. Some municipalities actually have bands on it. So if that's the case, you can quick and easy untie the flag, leave your pole in the car and, you know, where it is cape. Wrap it around your neck. It's really hard for them to keep this out of the room. And so like really any 
any blue fabric can be made into a water flag. I'm really interested in hearing your ideas. Um, you can go to the website, waterflags.org. The email address is flagship at waterflags.org or message Thousand Flags, Thousand Waters on Facebook. And Kay, this is for you. This is an original Water is Life Protected banner that was made in 2017 at an art build in Floyd that's been cut into a water flag. I'll be putting this in the mail to you this week. And it's really great to be here with all of y'all. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and go make water flags. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it back over to Emily. I can't wait to hear about radical flagging from Lulu Lamberta. Thank you, Mara. Now I will hand things over to Lainey Sullivan to introduce our second teacher this evening. Lainey? I'm actually gonna let Lily introduce herself because I think she'll do a better job. Lily? Hi, everybody. I'm Lily. I'm the director of All the Saints Theater Company in Richmond, Virginia. We are 15 years old this year. Um, we're total radical street, large scale puppet theater that does, we're mostly known for the Halloween parade that we started 15 years ago. Um, this October will be 15 years, um, which is non-permitted, big old street tradition in Richmond that we all look towards here in Richmond. Um, but we do a lot of protest theater. I've actually been a puppeteer for 20 years. I started working with Bread and Puppet Theater 20 years ago, and I still work with them in the summer and go on tour with them, but I am home-based here in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I learned from them, but I self-taught my own method of making puppetry based on the fact that at Bread and Puppet, we make, we use clay and um, soil for our forms for paper mache but being in a city, you had to adapt. So I use cardboard armatures and I love to flag. And um, I'm pretty sure I covered, I haven't seen the video that we're about to show. I'm pretty sure I, I talked a lot. So I see what Lainey put together with that. So we'll make sure everything gets covered in that. Um, and then if I miss something or if you have any thoughts, just try to jot them down and I will answer them at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The time has come for us to celebrate the parade. Hi everybody, it's Lily Lamberta of All the Saints Theater Company, a director and political puppeteer. I'm here to talk to you today about radical flagging Many of you have probably seen me waving flags around the streets. I'm gonna give you a little tutorial about how to make them. There are many different ways. You can see in this beautiful red flag here, there's a seam. You can sew a seam into a flag and duct tape the edge with one staple. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So the reason you have to use duct tape, which I don't actually use much in my creative practice, but it's necessary for when you're attaching fabric to wood or to bamboo with a staple gun, because otherwise you'll just tear through the fabric and you don't have something that will last. Um, so this is a flag and we'll do some beautiful flagging for you after I show you how to make some. I'll give you just a quick tutorial on the basics of how to move So um, I've got this old sail here and I started by just wrapping it around this bamboo. Again, bamboo is free. Um, most people that have bamboo in their property want it to be taken away. So before you go buy a train tracks or anything to harvest bamboo, just ask your neighbors, especially in the South. So I wrapped it around. I'm gonna use a staple gun and my piece of bamboo. You know, even after doing this for 20 years, sometimes my staples like don't go in all the way. So if that happens, you can just have a hammer nearby and push it down. The best way to get it in all the way is 
to make sure you're in the center of the bamboo as you staple. Um, again, I'm using duct tape to attach. Otherwise, you would just tear, even if this was cotton or canvas. This happens to be an authentic sale material, so like plastic. But I like using plastic flags for many reasons. Uh oh, might have just ran out of staples. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go inside. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. We got another staple we're here. And I can show you how to load these too in just a moment. Um, there's a big difference between a staple pliers, which is how I make my puppets, and a staple gun. So a staple gun is more for cardboard to wood or fabric to wood or bamboo, where this is cardboard to cardboard. So that's a different tool. So let's see if this one wants to work or not. More or less, see that's what I'm talking about when it doesn't go down, but notice I'm only stapling into into the duct tape. So uh, the difference between the staples for a staple gun is that they're they're not sharp on the bottom and they have a flat top. So some staples will be sharp. So anyway, you just drop it in and then shut and push. It's pretty basic. Let's see if these are gonna work for us because they're not the best size of staple. Interesting, huh? So I'm gonna go ahead and do hammer that down. So for smaller flags, you would just need to do an attachment point at the top and the bottom. If we wanted to, we could have sewn the seam. This is really just a DIY, like you need fast and furious. I, I don't really like to have duct tape showing on my stuff. So what I would go and do if I did use duct tape is, is hand stitch and or do one more wrap around here, like so. And make sure as you, if you ever roll around a, a stick with fabric, make sure you're not leaving lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this up. I don't like seeing duct tape on my stuff. And I'm gonna staple, I'm gonna staple here. Now this is called a staple pliers. It's my most important and used tool. And it's really great. And I'm just gonna put these in so you guys can see. So, this actually has a weight in the bottom of it. So this is interesting because this, this sail has a weight in the bottom of it. But the reason I like using plastic is because the sound is awesome and it catches the wind. So the most important thing about flagging is you cannot flag in one direction. So if you just go like this, you're, you're rolling it up onto itself. The only real thing to get started with flagging, so I'm just rewound, is that you have to do figure eights. So you go one direction and then the other. I'm making a big eight around my body. You can, when you get better at that, you can start moving that eight. So I'll do a circle in front and a circle behind, but you're always doing the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go this way and then behind. Meaning, if I put it in front and then, I can't even do it wrong, let's see. If I put it in front of me and then try to go the same direction behind me, I'll just be reeling it up. So if you just start and want to go super basic with big eights, big crisscrosses, if it was just an X and no flag, if it was just a, a stick and no flag, I would just be making an X in front of it on myself and making one big X. 
And then if I was just doing a stick, I'm doing a circle behind and a circle in front. A circle behind and a circle in front. Let me rewind this. Um, and while I have your attention, I'm going to show you a few different sizes of flagging and maybe make one more with you. So the reason why radical flagging, and I call it radical flagging, is because the flagging that we do as, as um, activists and creative street performers is collaborative. And so there's a lot of us around, um, so we have to be careful about other people. But why it's so important is because it makes us look a lot bigger than we are. Um, a lot more colorful. The, the color and the puppets, the reason why they're so powerful as a tool is because they confuse our opposition, whether that be, you know, counter protesters or officers of the law or people that just want to get us out of the street. Um, something that's so great about it is that you have to be careful, always look over your shoulder before you work. But I like to give space to myself when I'm in a crowd both from others, because when we separate more, like a big problem I see in street actions is we get too close together, it makes us look smaller. So when we take more space, we take more space, we shut down more streets, we look bigger, and it goes slower, which is actually the whole point of getting together is that we take more time in the streets. Um, also, this has saved my, my personal puppeteer booty many times, being a flagger, keeping me from getting handled by others, um, keeping me safe from cars. Here's a little trick where you can, you're just passing the stick. But this is how I keep people out of the way of ongoing traffic. Um, this is how we, as All the Saints Theater Company, we stop traffic a lot of the time. Um, you, people can see you, you can use um, color-coded colors that mean different things that you can tell your own personal people and or just make your action look more organized and prettier. So I'm going to show a few different sizes, the same technique. Um, that, that was like a super easy throw together demo of duct tape and staples, bamboo and fabric. Um, okay, so here's another flag. It is made the same way. Um, with this one, you can see I sew a seam. So if you have a sewing machine, you can sew a seam for the flag. That is the way I prefer to do it. However, today I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make a flag and to get practicing. You, you, you shut off the end. So you can see there's a seam here and it, the, it goes all the way down. You leave the underside open and then you put the stick into it and just duct tape the bottom. I'm not quite sure, I, I didn't even use staples on this one, it's just duct tape. Again, this is one of the only times I use duct tape is really for fabric to wood or for flags. It, it actually is the best option. So I wanna show you that it's the same principle. Let me take more space. You can see why I wear my pink duct tape. So the most important thing with big flags is that you can't go in the same direction. It's the same thing. Don't, don't go in the same direction. You have the same principle. If you go to the left, or if you go to the left, go to the right. You know, and this is the easiest way to do it, to get good, because I'm not using force. The only time I use force is when I'm pushing it back up. So I'm catching and pushing. Whereas if you tried to hold this and fight it the whole time it's in the air, like, ah, you're, you're really working against yourself. Whereas you let the air do the work, like all the puppet stuff, you know? Don't fight the wind. Go with what the wind says to do. So, you can do S's. If you go left, you gotta go right, no matter what you do. Big X's. And this is great. I mean, uh, this we've made flags as big as 30 feet long, made out of silk, made out of, this is a liner to dresses, which is a really great material, because here's a really easy thing to do. I'm tired, I'm still out here 
Take a break, anchor the base and push the top. Go the other direction, switch direction. Then you get to the point where you're pivoting around yourself and you can go fast. But it's the same thing. We just put fabric, sew to seam. If you don't want to sew or don't like to sew, get duct tape and a staple gun. So that's a large flag. And then I want to show you a difference between a flag and a banner. So a banner has got the same effect of a flag. Um, here we made a seam, put a cross stick in it. We have duct tape and staples. This is, these, this is an old banner. These were made with Bread and Puppet Theater, who are the, the original political puppet theater of the early 60s still existing in Glover, Vermont, a big part of the anti-war movement, civil rights movement, and the anti-nuclear movement of the 80s with Reagan. Um, they're still active. And that's where a lot of people like me who have these smaller political puppetry community theaters, a lot of us have learned from bread and puppet theater. So look them up. But these are cuts that we did in, uh, during Iraq war. 2003, I was working with them then. Um, we made about 70 of them. They're called the 17 Questions series. Um, they're intended for most social justice. Uh, we took 17 questions, basic questions. Um, this is a lino cut. This has many things to do with the flag. I have a painted flag over there. This is one's a lino print. Um, I think it's actually wood, wood based. But here you see you have the height. I mean, it's so light. You can go even higher. A lot of times we make these into sails for fabric boats. Um, they're great. In 2003, when we made these, uh, people were having weekly actions. And so we were able to get different communities all over the East Coast, um, a few of these. So all the Saints has four of them. And then we would go out once a week. So you can unify a whole nation by just making an assembly of series. But this is just a bamboo and clothesline. Um, what I have here is you have, you have it attached through the seam. There's a bamboo stick. You have it just anchored on both sides with one piece of tape and one piece of tape and stapled. And then you have a piece of clothesline that you thread underneath the stick and make a knot and just attach, attach it to the other end. And then once you have that piece, you can attach the center to the pole any way you please. And this right here is just additional duct tape. These puppets have been handled in and out, and a lot of times I reuse my bamboo. So that's another thing is you can always take off it. If you roll up the fabric nicely, you can store the flags and banners nicely, and you can take them off the center poles and reuse those for other purposes. So. Banners are more to be seen. Remember if you have a banner, especially if it's big enough um, to cut smiles in them, if you're, if you're two people or more, because you want the wind to blow through. Something like this, we used to anchor the ends. You can see on this side. Let me see. We used to anchor the sides. I see that in actions. It's really, it's really don't anchor the sides of banners. Just let the wind blow through it. And if you do anchor it, like if you have a banner that you are tacking to, let's say this is a banner, and you've decided you want to put a stick on the left and the right, either side, and you want to attach it all the way down, you're basically creating force and you're going to put those people's safeties and wellness at stake. So it's much better just to have a cross stick around the top Hold it up as big as you want. Let the wind blow it. The wind activates the message. Um, it, everything looks more powerful with the wind. If you're fighting the wind, it looks less strong. 
less attractive and it's gonna hurt you, so. Don't fight the wind. So, thank you for paying attention and listening to the wild world of radical flagging. I wanted to show this little flag here, which is just an example of how you can paint anything. And um, another way you can make signs more interesting is by turning them into sign, um, to flags and then activating them. And here you see the same, same staple gun usage and the duct tapes on the center underneath. So that's the preferred way. Whereas with the rainbow, we had too much extra fabric. But if you just have a smaller piece, put the duct tape on the inside and then go ahead and staple on the outside, you'll be fine to avoid, to avoid duct tape scene. Because even though we're radicals, we like things to be pretty. Thank you, Lily. Now, please welcome our third teacher, Zap McConnell, an investigator of dance, theater, movement, and performance. Zap is a visual artist, director, teacher, performer, environmental activist, and filmmaker. Animated by passionate beliefs and visions that flower out of her fierce love of the natural world. Welcome, Zap. Yay, thank you. And um, amazing presentations by the other two incredible teachers. I'm just gonna jump right in. Um, and I think Kay's helping me with some images. So the first image is gonna come up and basically I'm gonna talk about this sculpture, which is Earth on Fire, and talk about the challenges, the collaborations, the solutions. And then after I do a brief description, we're going to do a little brainstorming exercise of our own. So um, note right now all of the evil arrows that are attacking that center earth. So um, basically this fall, Kay sent me an image and she had a brainstorm about the sculpture that she wanted, there you go, uh, to be on the streets. And so my job as the artist at that time was to try to get as close to what she was going for, you know, with my own person, uh, person like into it. And then also I'm looking at some functions that she required and that I require as a uh, making something that's gonna move through crowds of people. So first it needed to actually be able to be tossed into a truck and so i'm thinking does it get disassembled does it uh is it super strong if it's disassembled are we going to lose parts or can we just chuck it in the trunk and it hangs over the side uh next can two people safely carry it oh not next slide i'm sorry um can two people safely carry it and maneuver it through sidewalks um then we also need to look at materials so all the materials need to be strong they need to be light they need to be weatherproof some need to be transparent but they all need to be affordable and then another challenge is i only had a couple of weeks and a super tight budget um, next slide so uh what i do a lot of times is make um things from scraps. I like to dumpster dive. I like to reuse things. There's so many things out there that we can use. There's just a wealth of materials. Why spend money? Um, and then another thing that I also try to do is create things specifically for an image, which is kind of hard when you're using scraps. So that's a fun challenge. Um, when it came to the first challenge, it's the oil drum. So if you scroll down a little bit to see the whole oil drum, they don't make those anymore. I did some light research. They're all plastic and we wanted the iconic metal oil drum. So one thing that I've noticed is uh, brainstorming and collaborating with other people and also asking for donations really helps activism uh, keep like it's soul in a lot of ways, because I might have a good idea, but if I work with other people like y'all, it's gonna be so much better. And when people donate time or energy or even supplies, they're part of something meaningful, especially if you approach them with respect and integrity. So I took all of this and I went over to Dempsey Calhoun's studio and we started working on the sphere, which is at the top. And one of the awkwardnesses of that sphere is that right now it's super hip to have a garden sphere. So they're way expensive. 
and even getting the materials and trying to attach it so it met all of the um, criteria was expensive. Weirdly, he had just made one experimentally out of rebar. So solution, yes, he donated it and it created a problem because rebar is super heavy. So it was top heavy and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, next image. So um, then we started trying to work on uh, Kay's idea of having like millions of children on this burning earth, a very strong image, right? But when we started experimenting with it, we would back away and it looked like there was mold or ants on the actual globe. And if you got up close, it looked like we're making a comment about overpopulation. Not what we're going for. So we brainstormed super quick and uh, next image um, came up with an idea to create a silhouette and we morphed it as much as we could. So hopefully every culture could kind of project themselves on the child. And it's two that are in a weather vane pattern and it, so it moves on the inside, but then we needed more help. So Matthew McConnell, who is a sculptor, he donated his laser cutter his time we sent him the images he cut these out out of steel he donated the steel and suggested that I spray them with um, vinegar and sit them outside so they'd rust really quick and we get that overall effect um, next image so when I finally had it finished and I brought it to Native Pond I had the wheels on the bottom of the oil drum so if you scroll down and it was too top heavy, it started falling over. So in a panic, I called Tom Elliott. He came over, we brainstormed for a few hours. He used his, his tools, his expertise, we salvaged some wood and he made that platform that has the wheels on the bottom. So it actually works really well with two people. You can still move it on a sidewalk, but if you really need to and you're super strong, you can kind of, one person can even lift the whole sculpture and put it to the side and it won't fall over. Um, next image. So one of the things that, um, like you can see, yes, an interesting sculpture, but what really kind of made it dynamic were those arrows that were attacking it. And so this is where we look at what happens when you have experience and you think you know what's going to happen and it doesn't. So it turns out that in the best case scenario in a controlled environment, that image works really well. Um, if you get a huge crowd between the activists holding those arrows and that sculpture, it looks like the activists are saying, yay coal, yay methane, which is not what we wanted. So go to the next slide. So this is still in play. I'm still brainstorming uh, with other people. We're learning from the experience of what happened, what worked, what didn't work. And somehow I need to attach inside the middle part of that uh, flexible poles that will hold the actual arrows and can easily be put in and take out and are strong. So go to the next slide. Um, basically, you just don't know what's going to happen in a protest. You actually don't really know what's going to happen when you're in the creative process. And so what we're about to do is do a super quick practice. We don't have enough time for it. That's on purpose of, and it's to try to, how can we start creating, um, like quick action solutions in a collaborative setting, um, you know, getting our flexible adaptivity in the field. So we don't get too many divas, we don't get too many generals, we build team working skills, not just for the longevity of this movement, but to change the world from the inside out, seems like a good plan. So right now, all the images are done and we're gonna go into the next brainstorming phase. So put on your brainstorming thinking caps, as my grandma used to say, and I'm just going to pitch you an idea. Then we're going to break up into groups. I'll tell you about that in just a second. Here's the idea. So we want to make a funeral that goes into a resurrection rebirth of the new Green Deal. So basically what our main idea is, is that an eight to nine year old child, of course, with the um, help of a, a parent being part of it, would represent the new Green Deal. So they are the new Green Deal. And the funeral procession needs to be able to go through a crowd. Uh, we need 
theatrical elements that are strong and uh, give people the idea of a funeral and also a resurrection or rebirth, um, but they need to be able to be disassembled really quickly if the crowd has to disperse because of outside elements that we often come into in protest uh, situations. So my question to you is, what ideas can we come up with where a child, nine to eight to nine years old, can be super visible in a large crowd safely? So we're gonna break you up into five groups and you're only gonna have five minutes to brainstorm, like popcorn style. Right away, you should pick someone who's gonna take notes. And um, when we come back together, that person will only have one minute to present ideas that you have, problems that you see, solutions that you have come up with. And uh, yeah, that's it. How can the child be visible, the most visible safely? Okay, and your, we'll take it away. And your response can be sketches. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is everyone back? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know what the number of the groups are, Kay. Um, maybe you could call like group one, group two, because I don't know. I think um, if just the spokespeople would identify themselves, unmute themselves, um, and politely take turns, that would work the best. Let's do that. And then we're just going to have a minute again for you to give us our, your ideas. So who are the spokespeople? Nice. All right. Who, whoever wants to go first, go first. Hold on, were we group, I think, Emily, were we group one? Yes, and who would like to speak on, we didn't decide who that is, we just went for it. Who would like to speak on it? Go ahead, Lily. Okay. Um, <laughs> my group was Natalie and Emily and Polly, and um, Natalie had a good idea of, a, of we talked about a lot of stuff and um <laughs> anyway I'll, I'll just give you the rundown i like natalie was talking about you know as this the having the funeral procession and carrying like kind of that traditional carrying a coffin and then there being like a birth out of the coffin and it be the child and then we talked about um many forms of of chariots or floats to make some way to elevate like you know i i've always but again this would be like what's the circumstances and how much rehearsal and blah 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 but um you know why not let's play so um you could have a kind of platform i've always kind of wanted to make a platform with a throne that could be carried by you know if you had little if it was made well and it was lightweight and it had it could be carried like a on the shoulders like a little platform for people with if it was like a bamboo basically bamboo that goes from the you to the person behind you with a platform across and then two other people parallel to you you carry it like so and if you got a was, minute yeah okay so that was one idea and then stilts like you know and i just talked about that visual for like the, to make the kid look bigger but without putting them on stilts or lifting them up have them like be pulled by some sort of animals like the lions or just like some sort of making them look like a great like some sort of um god or goddess like through costume and aesthetic like they could even be flat puppets but if they're pulling the thing then whatever they're pulling looks really important i love that oh my god yeah I'll, I mean, anyway, let's keep going. Who's talked next? talked about it, other things, but it's fast. It's all fast. Uh, this is Jess. Also, my group had Laney and Jameson, Graham and Rachel. And so uh, Laney uh, brought forth a very good idea, kind of referencing the <laughs> imagery of <laughs> Snow White's funeral and this kind of safety box. Uh, that the child could be in that uh, was indicative of, um, you know, watching someone in state, basically. And uh, Graham brought up 
the kind of idea of some content he'd seen online of these kind of joyous pallbearers that maybe were more celebratory of life. Um, Laney also had some great ideas about, um, you know, we talked about a hearse or some kind of trailer and float where the, the, the child would be elevated on top of that and it's kept safe that way. Um, sort of a coffin slash altar. Um, we also talked about imagery around transformation. Um, so if the kid is not necessarily, you know, if the, if the child is representing Green New Deal and imagery from caterpillar to butterfly, any kind of transformation um, imagery that was. We also talked about bees. Um, Jameson brought up some bees that would be released into the ground <laughs> and uh, had a great time. So it was nice chatting with everybody. Right on, right at one. Okay, excellent. These ideas are incredible. Next. We can't hear you. I tried to just unmute myself. Okay, so we were in um, a group with Jay and Zap and Desiree and we talked about some of these sim similar ideas. We also had the idea of a throne held on people's shoulders like a litter. Uh, and then uh, we, th we thought of possibly having the throne just be made out of a few strong people's arms if the child was fairly small. Um, that way you wouldn't have to have a lot of hardware. And uh, we also toyed with the idea of having it in some kind of fabrics, you know, swing, but that would be a little bit hard to pull off. Um, we also talked about um, how to choose the child and, and somebody brought up the idea of sort of representation and you know do you want a child who is a person of color or a male or female or whatever and then we thought well if we, if we paint them green <laughs> then maybe it doesn't matter as much um, and we also thought perhaps a lot of these plans for elevating the child would put that child in a bit of a risky position if there was chaos and somebody lost balance and so we also thought you know maybe we could use a doll <laughs> Or not. I mean, that that there's pluses and minuses to doing to doing that. Um, and we talked about having some kind of uh, situation where it'd be half and half. Like the beginning of the procession would be the funeral, and the second half of the procession would be a birth celebration. And how to sort of make that transition happen? You might have two children who look very similar, you know, as the, the dead child and then the living child or something like that. You're right at one. One minute. Are there more groups? Okay, cool. Um, Mindy, do you want to? Are you feeling um, the person? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. And Nana in the background. So we were in a group with Chad and Rebecca and Mara and Josh. Um, one of the first things we talked about is just, of course, making sure that we have a child who is theatrical, knows what they're doing, wants to participate, and understands what they're doing right? The next thing we talked about is making that child very visible. And what Mara brought up is like some, like some of you had brought up um, using sort of the parade kind of style of maybe like on top of a car or coming out of the top of a car um, with some kind of harness to keep the child safe. And then building on um, what we talked about earlier, um, moving from a funeral to a rebirth, using flags not only to um, indicate the funeral, which they might be in black, and then switch to green, but also would provide in this time a social distance, the social distancing that we need between us. Um, I think that was it. Mara, did you want to add anything to what we discussed? Yeah, we want to treat it on the car, right? Because that's easy to attach a harness to. And then have pallbearers with flags, but have two at the front and back that are like spotters, just to make sure the kid is safe, harnessed in, and we are providing distance. And bright colors. When the Green New Deal child emerges, has to be like from somber black gray to like no, bright chartreuse. Right at a minute. Okay. I'll interrupt that's here just cool. to note that it is 8 o'clock. And that is the end of our time, but we'd love to invite anybody who is interested and willing to stay on and join us uh, f to continue this concept design process. We'd love to hear more of your ideas. Um, and please join us next Thursday at 7 p.m. for the Sun Sing in Place concert. That's May 21st. You can watch it live on Artivism Virginia on Facebook, Vimeo, and YouTube. Come back for our next Street Sing workshop in two weeks, May 28th, here on Zoom. So did all of the groups get to talk? 
Did we do all the groups? I thought we had one more. We had four groups to talk. Was there one more group? Was there one more group? Okay. No, you... there were just four. Okay. Okay. So I'll just wrap that up really fast um, and say all of those ideas are incredible. And if you want to send them, Emily's going to tell you how to do it when we, when we totally leave each other. Um, we want to hear all those ideas. Uh, also, yeah, there wasn't enough time to do that. So let that kind of resonate in your body. Did you get to talk? Did you not get to talk? Did you talk too much? Um, how does it feel to be under the wire and to not have enough time? Um, usually out in the field, we don't have like four hours where we all have consensus circle and have a mediator. So part of this practice is just to keep practicing, trying to collaborate and brainstorm together, learning those kind of skills as we can, and also to awaken your creativity so we can start making more impactful protests that really, I mean, these ideas are so incredible and I want to hear like a hundred more minutes of everybody's idea, but really it's about what can you brainstorm together? How can you work together and what can you use at hand? So that's kind of all I have, Kay and everybody, unless we wanted to brainstorm more. Or if anyone had specific questions for the first two teachers too. Open it up. You have to unmute yourself. I just want to say uh, that Lily really appreciate you being with us live and also loved your videos. So that's all I got. But. Is the person here who asked the question about the sticks at the protest? Yeah, I'm st I was just about to bring Hi. it up. <laughs> Hi. Excellent. So you know in my history i think there's one time they try to not let us with the puppets because of sticks um but the flags they don't know that there's a stick on it if you keep your distance if you learn how to wave a flag they i'm telling you that has saved me from being arrested when they were actually telling me and actively trying to arrest me and i just flag and smile and flag and I flag fast but also I do those moves that create space around me so um, it is really a tool a safety tool in stressful like street stuff you know what I mean like um like it's really and honestly no cop has gotten my gotten any of my flags um, they have gotten drumsticks. They know those are sticks. And um, yeah, so on, you know, I feel like it, it especially if you really uh, feel comfortable with the flag and you, uh, you know, the cool thing about the puppets and the flags and, and colorful ideas and, and, and collaborative creative ideas is that it really confuses everybody and it creates, it creates an energy that confuses whoever's your opposition, usually, unfortunately, I don't know why, but usually it are, it's usually officers trying to shut us down or get us out of the streets. Um, and, you know, the happy people waving flags with kids around and brass music, I mean, it really does slow them down. And, and the Halloween parade is, um, can you shut the door, sweetie? Almost, shut the door. This is my daughter. Um, <laughs> There she is. Hi. <laughs> so, you know, the, the parade um, has grown from 60 people the first year to over thousands of people. And um, we haven't had a permit at all the whole time. And um, I think a lot of that is in the first four years, they tried to shut us down. But then um, it's just it's very confusing to them. So the more we can do to just bring color and excitement into the streets and a diverse population into the streets, age diversity, racial diversity, and the more color and flags I think you have, the, the, the safer the action is. Hmm. So, so I mean, that's um, one, one of the things, um, may I respond to that, Kay? Sure. Thanks. So I just wanted to say that's one of the main differences I think between urban activism and rural activism. Because there's actually quite a few municipalities in Southwest Virginia, including Black 
board that completely prohibit signs on poles, flag poles, post Charlottesville. And yeah. so it's individual if you're working in a smaller area. I think Franklin has one too. Emily might know that. Um, so they have actually taken our poles away or made us take them to the car or whatever. So it is different sometimes if you're in a less populated mm -hmm. area with local government that's playing a different sort of role, which is why we make the flags be, to be able to be removed, the water flags. So if you do have your pole taken away, you can say, okay, I'll just leave the pole, but you still have the flag. Mm -hmm. I will say that I have flagged all over the world and, you know, had good luck with it. But yeah. Yes. I, I was just going to say, this is Kay, that, um, you know, kind of the core principle of artivism is the, the realization that beauty and joy is so invitational. Um, and part of what we're trying to do all the time is create invitations to people who don't already agree with us and attractions. And the other thing that feels like it happens, and I've seen it every time uh, All the Saints has uh, been on the scene, is that there is that astonishment and there is that energy among the people creating the event to to see and feel themselves as something as part of something uh, fantastic and gorgeous, and that creates a lot of forward mo. And it's harder for other people to mess with you. And even if they do, they look foolish and mean. I agree fully. Yes. Well, Thank if you, there's, everybody. If there's anything else that anybody wants to add or share, please feel free. And if you think of something later, um, as Zap said, you can drop uh, ideas in the discussion tab of the Facebook event, or you can always email artivismvirginia at gmail.com. Um, and, and we all are connected via the internet and so we'll we'll see you out there is there anything else and thanks so much to mara and lily and zap again for being with us Yay. my pleasure thank yes. you i can't wait to do this in person friends yes thanks for being here everybody thanks a lot we'll see you next week for the concert and in two weeks for another workshop be safe be well good night Excellent. Thank you. See y'all soon. Bye, Mara. Bye, Zap. Bye. Bye, everybody. And this is recorded, right, for other people to see. It is recorded. Excellent. This is amazing. We're getting the, mm -hmm. getting the populace uh, aware. <laughs> You're Enjoy amazing. It. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, you guys. That was awesome. Thanks for sharing, Zap and Mara. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lily. Thank you, Zap. It was an honor. Go forth and create, friends. You Take too. care of each other. Be safe.